Welcome, everybody. My name is Ben Savage, and I am the founder of Spaceport.io, formerly known as Siblings. And I'm here to talk about HTML5 and gaming, the, the, the potential promise and the real life problems of making HTML5 games today. So to begin with, I want to start by saying I'm only going to be talking about mobile. Um, from the perspective of gaming, HTML5 is about the mobile browser. If we look at growth of where is where are the users? The last big event in gaming was social gaming, which largely means Facebook. Facebook is now up to 0 0.8 billion active users. Mobile is going to completely destroy that number. It is projected to be 2 billion smartphone users by the end of 2015, with an extremely large percentage of them playing games. The number, the growth curves for Facebook have already sort of plateaued. So this is where the future growth is in virtual goods markets. And so HTML5 becomes a very interesting way to potentially reach that market. There's a couple of problems. The first is that there has been an explosion of platforms. There's a, more mobile browsers and more mobile operating systems than we had had to deal with on PC web gaming up until now. iOS, Android, Wim, RIM, WebOS, Symbian, Bada, and Windows Mobile, just to name a few. Along with that, there's come a divergence of skills. If you want to target the broadest possible audience with your game, then you'll need to simultaneously be familiar with a number of different languages like Objective-C, Java, C-sharp, and JavaScript. There's also been segmentation of the market. It's very difficult to reach everyone with a single game because there is a series of walled gardens. Um, the iOS App Store, the Google Marketplace, more and more different Android marketplaces, um, Windows Marketplace, just to start off with. Now, when we were making PC games over the last decade, Flash was there to the rescue, made working on all the different web browsers tractable because it worked the same way everywhere, provided good performance, and reached about 99% of people with web browsers. But Flash has not made the transition to be a legitimate mobile operating uh, game choice. Most notably, it's not supported on iOS, as everybody is very well aware. There's the various performance issues um, that you can see if you try to play mobile um, on a mobile browser, say Android, using Flash, and the battery life issues that um, are imposed by something that's so um, consuming of the CPU power. And so, we all turn to the browser, right? It'll be the solution that will save us, HTML5 for gaming. Well, I want to temper that with a little bit of a historical perspective. If we look at the history of Flash as an example of a new platform maturing to reach the sort of the needs of gaming, this is a 10-year story. In 2001, Shockwave.com launched. You remember games like AddictingGames.com and Congregate and Newgrounds, the sort of simple arcade games that we saw back then, leading to virtual worlds. In the 2003, we had Gaia Online launch, a series of things like that. Then Flash became used for things like video players, like YouTube in 2005, and Pandora doing music streaming. Uh, I don't know how familiar everyone here is, but there was a sort of a renaissance of Asian um, MMORPG games in Korea and Japan and in China that led to billions of dollars of virtual goods sales in Flash games. And then in mobile, in Japan, there's been two major platforms, DENA and GRI, who've done a tremendous amount of gaming using Flash Lite. Desktop tower defense, raise your hand if you played that game in 2007 when that came out. I think all of us probably did for too many hours. Finally culminating in social games on Facebook. Farmville in 2009, Icarol in 2010, and more and more demanding games as time goes on that are doing more and more things with Flash that it has never been able to do before. This is a 10 year story of Flash and the marketplace maturing to have faster and faster, more 
accessible technology, as well as finding a business model. And with social gaming, we found a really good business model. It is an amazing thing that people will pay for virtual goods. And it is an extremely high revenue model. So the question is, where is mobile HTML5? If we look at this platform evolution, that 10 year history, where are we in terms of HTML5? I believe that the answer is we are solidly in the simple arcade games section, um, the very beginning of that track. And there's a long way to go before we'll be seeing virtual worlds and massively multiplayer online role playing games and high performance social games running entirely in HTML5 in mobile browsers. Right now, HTML games will be most successful when specifically designed around the limitations of the platform. That's a very general truth. If you look at successful games through all time, on new platforms, they've always been designed around what was available. So back in the very beginning with Pong, it was designed to be able to do what things were available. You look at asteroids with vector graphics when things were drawn where the number of pixels you drew was the limitation, so things were done with outlines. All the way along through sprite sheets and Mario to where we are today in HTML5. So we can apply the same historical lessons that we have from the past to try and find what works, what works well, and to design our games specifically around that. And be cognizant of it rather than simply trying to take the things we already do and do them exactly the same way. So when will we arrive? If, as I have suggested, the free-to-play, virtual goods-based business model is a fantastic business model for gaming. It has become completely dominant in Asia, very dominant in the United States. If you go to the iOS app store and look at the top grossing games, a larger and larger percentage of them every month are free. When will we see games like Restaurant City and Tiny Tower and Frontierville and Ick Girl, more demanding games with isometric worlds and many, many sprites moving all over the place and be able to play them on our iPhones and Android phones? The main limitation for those right now is graphical performance in the browser. You cannot render a very large number of simultaneously moving objects with animation all at the same time. Well, when will we get there? Well, Fortunately for us, um, Moore's law tends to be working in our favor. Hardware has been improving dramatically. Just from 2007 to 2010, if you look at just the iPhone, um, we've gone from about 412 megahertz processors to one gigahertz processors. And we've gone from having 128 megabytes of RAM to 512. It's a very, very, very helpful thing. But there's also been a massive improvement in JavaScript execution speed which is not a purely hardware thing. The competition between engines like Nitro, Squirrelfish, TraceMonkey, and V8 have led to an exponential increase in JavaScript performance, which is also getting us closer to our, our target. And then graphical performance. There is lots of new competing technologies that are a part of the HTML5 umbrella that are all offering potential solutions of how to get high performance graphics. WebGL is an extremely interesting technology, but there are no mobile browsers today that have support for it or announce plans to support it in the future. So for the scope of my segment, this is out. <laughs> Canvas. Canvas has excellent support in mobile browsers, but it is very, very slow. It is not hardware accelerated. The thing that I have found in my experience to be the best solution for mobile HTML5 games is CSS 3D transforms, which are hardware accelerated everywhere that they are present. One other problem that we have with the bringing of um, games to mobile is a choice, which is will we build native apps or HTML5 web apps? This is a very difficult bet to make because due to the fact that you have a limited number of resources on your team and time and money, and time to market is extremely important. You'll have to make a choice in nine times out of 10 to either launch one or the other, but you will not be able to launch both if you're starting from scratch. It's very hard to not have to choose one over the other. This is why my company, Spaceport, created our platform to try and help developers bring mobile game bring games to mobile in all of the different forms. 
to try and solve each of these issues that I've just brought up today. To begin with, Spaceport, you write your code in JavaScript. We chose JavaScript for a number of reasons. First, it runs everywhere. You can run it on servers, web browsers, smart TVs, and all smartphones. And it's fast, and the industry is backing it. Google and Facebook and Apple are all working very diligently on improving JavaScript, usability and speed. With Spaceport, you write your game in JavaScript, but you can launch your game on all of the separate platforms with a single code base as a pure HTML5 application, a native iOS application, native Android application, and a Flash application for the web to let you reach the entire audience with a single code base. We also designed Spaceport to support the process that game developers already have in place. For the free-to-play social game developers who have been putting games on Spaceport, they have been using Flash to create art assets, animations, and code. Spaceport allows the use of Flash to continue authoring artwork and animations with the same exact tools, no skill change. And we have implemented the same API as ActionScript 3 in JavaScript so that the classes that you're used to using and the type of coding patterns you're used to will work as well. And Spaceport is like a web page. It downloads HTML and JavaScript so that you can instantly update your application without this extra overhead of app stores and publishing binary submissions and compilation. So Spaceport as a native application framework is here today. It's very fast and supports a very wide range of features. So what is today possible is to launch a high performance native application and with no change, as HTML5, this platform matures and performance increases and uh, the set of features that are part of the spec are more thoroughly implemented, without any code changes, you're future proofed to be able to launch on HTML5. Of those things that I mentioned earlier, of WebGL and Canvas, we have done a tremendous amount of research into SVG, the scalable vector graphic element. We created a process to automatically convert SWF files created with Flash Pro into SVGs so that they can be used in a pure HTML5 context. In the same fashion, we convert Swift files into meshes that can be given to graphics hardware for native rendering. One of the challenges of building mobile games is that unlike PCs where we could still get by with fixed width layouts, we all have to support devices of all different aspect ratios and different resolutions. Using scalable vector graphics is the best way that I know of to reach that problem. Spaceport team also provides you with a buffer between you and the messy truth of fragmentation. Um, browsers are rather fragmented. Just Safari, Chrome, Mobile Safari, Mobile Chrome, and Firefox provide an extreme wide range of supported and unsupported features, and documented and undocumented crashes. And Android has the same exact issue. So using an engine like Spaceport provides a layer in between having to deal with that code and writing your game logic. So I just want to conclude with a demo of what is possible today in HTML5 using Spaceport. Feel free to visit HTML5.spaceport.io and you'll be able to play this application. This is a pure HTML5 application running in mobile Safari on the iPad. This is done using scalable vector graphics, SVG elements, everything done with CSS 3D transforms so that it's hardware accelerated use of the accelerometer, and this code is exactly the same code that will work on all the different things. So go to html5.spaceport.io and see what kinds of things are possible in HTML5 today as high performance as you'll be able to find in mobile Safari. Thanks.